Hey guys, Churchy here. So in this guide, I wanna show you how you can generate infinite funds, food, timber, and stone for your city building purposes. This method takes out a lot of the grind from building up new Sirocco, and it makes the unique resources required for the specialized buildings the only thing you really need to worry about. So let's get into it. First things first, let's have a look at what's going on and why this works. Okay, so quick disclaimer here that I just wanted to throw into the video. Please keep in mind that this strategy, this infinite funds method, uh, could be nerfed at any time. A lot of the videos I've made in the past, a lot of the strategies and guides and things that I've made um, and things I've shown you how to do, a lot of that has been nerfed. Some of it absolutely nerfed into the ground. Um, the devs do have a tendency to kind of uh, get on top of things like this eventually and stop them from being viable. So I just wanted to throw in this quick disclaimer to tell you, please check the title of the video and make sure you look at the comments before you follow this strategy, just to make sure that it is still viable because that could change at any time. All right, back to the video. Okay, so here I am in the city hall and if I talk to Dorian, I can show you what's going on. So if we talk to him, we need to buy resources for the settlement. As you can see, I've like maxed out my food, my timber and stone is well and truly going up. I've got 53,000 funds. I'm getting 240 funds per day, 20 food per day, four timber and four stone per day. And if I click on these little eyes, I can show you a bit more information. So as you can see what we've got going on here, I'm getting a hundred funds each from my alchemist shop and my food store. Those also count as houses. So I've got a total of seven houses because I've got five plus the extras from the food store and the alchemist shop. So that's totaling 140 funds because 20 funds per house when you've got the city hall. And then my costs are negative 25 for the uh, stockpile, the hunting lodge, the mason's workshop and the woodcutter's lodge. The stockpile is because I've upgraded it to the warehouse. Um, and the warehouse is a really important upgrade because that actually allows the food, timber and stone caps to go up to 2000, which is really important. Then if I look at our um, food, you can see that the costs for the food is negative five on a house and negative five on the shops. And that's a total of 35. Plus I've got the food store and the hunting lodge. So that works out to be a 20 in the positive. And then the timber and stone are just four each for their respective resource buildings. Another really important thing is that you only get the first tier of resource generation buildings. So you only build the hunter's lodge, the mason's workshop, and the woodcutter's lodge. You don't uh, you don't worry about the upgrades for these buildings because that will throw off the fund generation for this strategy. So, how does this strategy work? So this strategy, you basically want to come over to talk to Joseph, and then all you need to do is say, "I'd like to spend a week helping with the construction tasks." Then you do that. Okay, so we've passed the week. And now here we are back at the entrance. Another important thing is that you build the city hall right near the entrance because every time you reset the week, every time you pass a week, you'll spawn right there at that gate. So you want to be able to come back in and quickly do this. So now we come over here and we talk to Dorian. And as you can see, this has gone up. Now, the best thing is that this is, because this is per day, what I'm actually getting is 1,680. So 1,680 funds per week. I'm getting 140 food per week and I'm getting 28 timber and 28 stone per week. So that's really, really cool. Now, why can we do this forever? This is one of the most important parts. So what's really, really important to remember, and this is something I will mention multiple times in this guide, is that when you complete the, uh, the stealing fire quest, basically you'll return a charged forge stone from the eldest brother volcano. You'll bring that back here and you'll talk to Joseph. When you do talk to Joseph, that will complete the stealing fire quest and then it will start the liberate the sun quest. Then in your journal, you'll have this pop up and it will say, speak with Evangeline Valier about construction. Whatever you do, do not speak to Evangeline because this whole infinite resources strategy relies on you not triggering the next stage of her quest. If you speak to her, you'll suddenly have another 150 day countdown timer and you'll have to deal with that and all of the stuff that goes with that or you'll get locked out from upgrading more buildings. So you don't want to trigger that because by not triggering that, you haven't triggered the, yeah, by not talking to her, you haven't triggered the next stage of the quest, which means there is no countdown timer yet, which means you can come over and talk to Joseph and you can farm this strategy infinitely. You can farm it for as long as you like. You can cap out all of these resources and you can get your funds as high as you want. Um, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you are doing this, you, because you can't talk to Evangeline and you have to talk to her to turn in samples, 
it means that you won't be able to get some of the unique resources that you might need to build some of the buildings you want to build until you finish farming. So what you can do is just try and farm up a bunch of samples before you do this. Um, that could be a way to do it. Or if you, if you aren't too fussed, just make sure you get the ones that you uh, need for the buildings you want to build for the strategy. Um, so I went for the I went for the the alchemist shop and the food store because they were this was the way for me to optimize the strategy because the food store was giving me more food, which meant I could build more houses without having to funnel in food. Um, and the alchemist shop I did because you can get it really fast because it doesn't have a housing requirement, which I'll go into more detail in a minute when I show you guys the build order, but. The important thing here is that like, if you do decide to do other buildings, which you can do. So there's, you know, there's other options. Just make sure that you've got stuff that's generating funds. So, you know, you could have, I could have gone for a blacksmith shop. Um, again, so then all you need to keep in mind is, as you can see, that needed flash moss um, as its unique uh, material. So whatever buildings you do want to build for this strategy, make sure that you are generating funds. Um, and that you have the unique resource that you need to get it. In the case of the uh, alchemist shop and the, uh, and also because you need a city hall, so you're going to need an amethyst geode. But for the city hall, you need an amethyst geode. For the mace, uh, for the alchemist shop, you need petrified organs, and for the food store, you need a digested mana stone. So I gathered those from other characters, and then I was able to build that. Um, but I'll go into more detail in that in a minute. But yeah, so now you can just keep spending weeks helping. And as you can see, that's still going up. So I just keep doing that. Alrighty guys, now let's talk build order. After you complete the Fallen City quest, that will give you access to New Sirocco and it will start the From the Ashes quest. At the start of this quest, you're given 7,000 funds, 50 food, 100 timber, and 100 stone. So that's going to help a lot to cover the costs of uh, your initial building setup. And it'll help you get to a stage where you don't really have to grind out much gold or silver to turn into funds because you've already covered most of your costs for the for the strategy to get off its you know off to its initial start. And then the buildings in the strategy will help cover some of the costs. So hopefully minimal grinding but anyway the first building i built was house a i'll also mention at this point that it doesn't matter what houses you build you'll end up building a total of five houses um so just build whichever ones you want but yeah so i started with house a which was 2000 funds 40 stone and 40 timber and the reason i built the house is so then i can build the resource generation buildings so then after the house i built a hunting lodge mason's workshop and woodcutter's lodge I tried to place them all down at once, I believe, and then just get them out of the way. Um, doesn't matter if you have to build them over a few weeks or whatever. Just try and get them, uh, try and get those three done. Then once they are done, then you want to move on to finishing the From the Ashes quest. That involves going to the western side of the caldera and going into the Mermitor hives and uh, collecting a Mermitor egg. And then you bring that sort of to the north middle area to the sulfuric caverns which is near the sulfuric chimneys you go in there you dip it in a blue pool and then you bring that back to dorian once you've done that you'll be rewarded with 5,000 funds at the end of this quest whether you fail or succeed um, this isn't really entirely relevant to this uh, strategy um, this infinite funds method but i will mention here that you should always try and make sure that you complete successfully complete these settlement quests because the uh the rewards are good and the failure if you fail these quests it's got some really really bad negatives for your settlement um so yeah that's just good to keep in mind but anyway at this point that quest will complete and then you'll move on to the start of the stealing fire quest um and you'll have access to specialized buildings at this point i built an alchemist shop uh, for 3,000 funds, 60 stone, 120 timber, and one petrified organs. Um, I will mention here that this is the stage where if you wanted to build other buildings, um, like the blacksmith shop or whatever, instead of the alchemist shop and the food store, um, yeah, just make sure that you have the unique resources required for those buildings that you want to build. But yeah, at this stage with the alchemist shop, that's now going to be enough to cover the upkeep from the resource generation buildings. 
um, which was totaling 75 funds. And then given this will give an extra 25 funds per day on top of that because it's generating 100 funds. So 100 take 75, you're left with 25 funds per day. And it's also a good choice because it provides a point of housing later and it has no housing requirement to actually build it. Then after the alchemist shop, I built another house, house B, 2000 funds, 60 stone, 20 timber. And at this stage, the housing plus the alchemist shop, so that's two houses in the alchemist shop, is gonna bring your food per day down to zero because the hunting lodge we built earlier is only providing 15. So if you wanna build more stores and houses without making a food store, then you need to keep in mind that you're going to have to manually purchase food while doing the funds generation potentially if you want to if you want to build up your food resource for upkeep of your buildings um, whereas if you do 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 build the food store then you will have food generating already um, but yeah after that house B I built the city hall for 4,000 funds 120 stone 120 timber and one amethyst geode the city hall is going to provide you with 20 funds per day per point of housing and that's going to basically total now to 85 funds per day because we've got the 25 knockover from the alchemist shop and then we've got two houses plus the alchemist shop counting as a as a house so that's 60 funds 60 plus 25 85 funds per day now you want to finish the stealing fire quest now finishing this quest involves talking to joseph and then he'll give you an uncharged forged stone backpack you then have to take this to the eldest brother volcano, which you can access via old Sirocco. You go down to the bottom of the volcano and there is a platform with a charging station on it. It's guarded by a bunch of obsidian elementals and some nasty stuff. But a little tip here, you can actually lure those enemies into the path of a snail and then they'll fight each other. And then you can run back onto the platform and access the charging station without much fuss. Then you can do that, get the charged forge stone and return to new Sirocco. Once you get back to New Sirocco and you talk to Joseph, that's gonna complete the stealing fire quest. And this is the really, really important part again, which I cannot stress enough. When you do that, it's going to start the liberate the sun quest. And once that quest starts, you'll have a little journal entry that will tell you to talk to Evangeline. Whatever you do, do not talk to Evangeline until you've finished farming your funds. As long as you don't talk to Evangeline, you won't trigger the next 150 day countdown timer. So once you finish the rest of the build order in this guide, you can keep talking to Joseph and helping out for a week to generate infinite funds, food, timber and stone at a decent rate. Um, but you won't be able to turn in any ore or plant samples or mole pig specimens you find because that requires interacting with Evangeline. So just store samples and specimens somewhere for later. And as I mentioned earlier, just make sure if you're building other buildings instead of the food store and alchemist shop, just make sure that you've got the unique resources you need before you reach this point. So after completing the stealing fire quest, I built a food store. The food store was 3000 funds, 80 stone, 80 timber and one digested mana stone. And building the food store at this point is just really good because it provides you with more funds per day. It gives an extra point of housing, which is then giving you even more funds. And it provides enough extra food to cover the upkeep of three more houses, which will bring the total to five and still provide another 20 food per day on top of that. So after I built the food store, I moved on to building the warehouse. The warehouse is 2000 funds, 80 stone and 80 timber. And I think upgrading the stockpile to the warehouse is a very important thing to do. And it should be done so that you can let your timber and stone resources slowly build up to the 2000 cap while you do the funds generation. And then after the warehouse, all you need to do is build three more houses. So I built house C, house A, house A. And again, 2000 funds, 20 stone, 60 timber, 2000 funds, 40 stone, 40 timber. But yeah, as long, again, just to stress, as long as you don't talk to Evangeline, you won't trigger the next 150 day countdown timer. So you can keep talking to Joseph and helping out for a week to generate infinite funds, food, timber, and stone at a decent rate. You can do this for as long as you want, generate as much resources as you want. Um, you've just got to keep in mind that food, timber, and stone will all cap at 2000 and you won't be able to turn in any ore or plant samples or mole pig specimens you find because that will require interacting with Evangeline. So you just store the samples and specimens somewhere for later 
And as I mentioned again, just to really make sure I'm driving all this home, um, if you are building alternative buildings to the food store and the alchemist shop, just make sure you have the unique resources you need before you get to the point of triggering the Liberate the Sun quest where you don't talk to Evangeline. But yeah, that is pretty much it. That is the, uh, that is the method. Um, that's how you set up the method with the build order. Um, I will quickly show you a bit more footage again now of just um, basically doing the method and generating the resources. Uh, and yeah, but that is going to do it for this guide. Uh, thank you to the legends supporting me on Patreon. I could not be doing this stuff without you guys. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, it means a lot. It really does. It's, it's, uh, the support is awesome. Um, yeah. I've also been uh, getting a lot of support on Twitch and stuff lately, so I just want to say thank you for that as well, everyone. Um, yeah, the support lately has meant a lot. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to hopefully keep making good content. Um, yeah. And thank you for watching. Have a good day or night whichever it may be, and I will see you in the next video.